In this video, I'm going to show you how to create animations like these without using any keyframes. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. Look who it is. That sucker. Do you inexplicably hate keyframes? If so, you should probably talk to someone. But in the meantime, I can show you how to create decent animations using only expressions. The main expression we're going to use, and the secret source for these animations, is this sample luma value. I found it here. So kudos to Animaplex, who I'm sure are the Yodas to my Luke Skywalker when it comes to expressions. Basically, this expression means that you can use the luma of a layer to drive animation. So before we look at this or this, we're going to quickly build this, as it will show the expression in a much more simple form and help us get our heads around it. If that's not what you signed up for, feel free to skip to the next chapter, I won't judge you. And as always, you can download the project files for these for free on my Gumroad. So if we create a new composition, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second, going to add a new solid and make it 2000 by 2000 pixels. Call it Luma. And then we're going to add the light sweep effect. And also a fill. And we want the light sweep on top of the fill. And this is going to be the Luma that drives the animation. So we'll adjust the light sweep settings. Doesn't matter too much what they are. And then we'll add an expression on the center. Value plus open bracket time times 100, close bracket. Because we're showing off and not using keyframes for this. So then we can move that center. So we want it to be bottom left screen and then wipe over. And we want it a bit faster, so we'll just change that to 3000. Create a circle, center the anchor point, center it on screen, and get rid of the stroke. I'll fast forward through this bit, but we just want a grid of circles. It doesn't matter what the size of the circle is, this is just to get our heads around the, the concept of this expression. So we've got our grid of circles. Gonna separate the dimensions of the position. So we want it to animate on the Z. And if we copy the Z keyframe from one and then paste it to the others, that'll separate the dimensions of all the others. And then we're going to use this expression here, which is sample luma value, and we're going to paste that onto the Z position. Then we need to change the target to our luma layer down here. So that's now sampling the luma of that layer. Just going to move our luma layer down so it's lined up with our grid of dots. If we switch our view from Active Camera to Custom View 1, it'll be easier to see the movement on the Z. The next thing we need to do is change the sample point, because at the moment all of the dots are referencing the same point, 960 by 540. So we'll just change the expression so that the sample point is referencing the X and Y of each individual layer. So the only other thing to mention with this expression is this last line here. The sample luma will output value between 0 and 1, 0 for black, 1 for white. But this last line is a linear expression, so it's actually going to output a value between 0 and 100, which means our dots are going to move 100 pixels if it's sampling white. If you use this expression and you want whatever you're animating to move further, you can change that value from 100 to 1000 or whatever. We'll keep ours at 100 and then copy and paste that expression onto the other layers. So now those layers are reacting to the light sweep going across. So those layers are moving backwards in Z space, but if we had a camera attached to a null, rotate it round, that appears to move forwards and we get this. Wow. Okay, so now that we've created this, we can look at this and this. If we replace the light sweep with fractal noise, then swap out the circles for a grid of text with the letters on their own layers, we can get this. That's great! So I'm not going to do step-by-step -step tutorials for either of these. What I'm going to do is just go through the workflow, impressions that I've used, videos that I've uploaded, and just highlight some steps 
to help you along the way because you probably don't want to create a grid of licorice all sorts or a fractal grid of text which looks exactly the same as this but create your own things i guess okay so there's links for both workflow videos on my sister channel the video shop long play free project files for both as well so you can download the project files have a look through them or just watch the rest of this and you should be able to get your head around this so here i brought in this image which is the main image that i was referencing that i wanted to animate as well as some other images of the licorice all sorts i don't think these ones here are official all sorts i'm not sure i haven't seen them before these ones here definitely look familiar dusty two or three years old at the bottom some plastic jar in some sweet shop all sorts aren't really my thing each all sorts I'm pointed to this image here but uh, it's the same as the animation so each one of these is its own pre-comp and what I did was created a shape layer 500 by 500 pixels and then making sure that I was using C4D renderer so that I could extrude it, made them 3D layers and extruded them and then they're stacked one on top of the other. So if we skip ahead, we end up with something like this. I've used an expression to make the stacking part easy so I can duplicate. I think this is where, this might be where I was duplicating them here. Yeah, so you can select them and duplicate them like that. And then what it does is that's not only naming them because you've got segment comma, but it's also stacking them because I'm using the um, layer name split expression. I'm not gonna go into that, but I've got a separate tutorial on that expression if you're not familiar with it. What it does is it takes this number here after the comma and then uses that to calculate where they need to be stacked in Z space. You can do that manually, so I'm not going to spend ages on this part of it. So we've got the, the different colors that we need and this comp here that we're working in, you can see here is a square comp. So this is a 500 by 500 comp and then each segment is 500 by 500 and then they're just colored, colored differently and stacked on top of each other. Then because I'm super anal, I've named it O1. And then we've got our green, yellow, and pink one. And if we scrub through, I'm busy creating all the variations, of the square, all sorts that I need. Then the circular ones are a bit easier because they're just one shape layer and you've got an outside segment. So this yellow one here, which is a 500 diameter. And then using um, play this, if you add a merge paths, set it to subtract, then we've got uh, two. Ah, okay. So here actually kept them as rectangular paths, but if you if you max up the roundness, it turns it into circles. It's the same as using uh, ellipses. So you've got one that's 500, and then I can't remember what the inner value was, maybe 250 um, and it's subtracting it. And then just duplicate the outside one to make it an inside one. And then that's the licorice part. Yeah, the yucky part. If you're not a fan of licorice, I'm not. Okay, so let's skip ahead because that's pretty straightforward. Duplicate that to make the pink one. Um, the only other thing that I want to show you here is so this is me bringing them into the main comp that we're using and you want to use Cinema 4D Renderer again for this main comp. It's important to have continuous rasterization checked on these pre-comps as well so that they appear 3D or sort of, you know, pseudo 3D in After Effects. The, there's a camera attached to a null and you can see the perspective here is flattened out. You can always skip to it's around an hour in the workflow, but this is something I've done in quite a few of my videos, so I'm not gonna spend ages on it, but 
to create like a faux isometric view, you just pull the camera way back in Z space and then you compensate with the zoom. And you can expression link the zoom to the Z position to do that. And then the camera null, I can't remember the rotation values uh, off the top of my head, but I was just trying to sort of copy this, this view here. I'm just gonna skip ahead and show you the lighting, which I actually just copied when I was working on this, <clears throat> I just copied the lights that I'd already created for this animation, then attached them to a null, made it a 3D null, and then just kind of rotated that null just so um, I could just quickly change the lighting and get it to something I was happy with. I didn't spend ages messing around with the lighting, to be honest. And then we've got an ambient light to just brighten everything up generally. Looking at this frame here, you'll notice there's no there's no highlight to these. So it's quite nice if the light just catches on the edge. It just makes it makes things look less blocky geometric. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by skipping way ahead. You can see that it looks just quite flat and there's not much of a sense of light in here. And then in the final render, what I did was add a bevel to the top segment of each one. Didn't have to do it for all the segments, but just the top segment, convex bevel uh, of five, and then just had to adjust the size of the square to compensate, because otherwise this one would have stuck out slightly. So this, the top square is 490 by 490 with a bevel of five. And then that just gives you the, the nice highlight Going back, done here is instead of a light sweep, I've just used a black solid on top of a white solid, animated it. So this comp has keyframes, but you could add the time expression here as it moves. So um, technically this is still animation without keyframes, even though this has keyframes. Um, Feel free to call me a liar. Liar! Just so it wasn't so, oh, listen, it's six music as always. Just so it wasn't so linear, the way that they rose and then fell, um, I just added a turbulent displace. So that's what these, all sorts of referencing as a Luma layer. So it doesn't have to be a layer within the same composition. It could be a separate comp and uh, the all sorts of referencing it from outside. So this is me checking that that works. So the animation has been driven. So the segment thickness here, I've got them expression controlled. So each individual licorice all sort comp is expression linked to this segment thickness. So I could change the segment thickness to 10 or one here, and they'd all shrink accordingly. And all the layers would stack accordingly as well. Uh, the base level, I could I could move these up or down because I wasn't sure if I wanted a floor. And the camera distance and the sample size is is in the expression, the Amaplex expression. I wasn't sure whether it would make a difference whether it was a large or small sample size, so I just had that expression controlled. And then the expression multiplier, it's looking at this extrusion multiplier to go, do you want to times that by 20 or 10 or whatever. And again, all the, the expressions as I've used them, they're all in the description below. So this, this is a little bit tedious, um, having to sort of manually create this grid, but um, if anyone has any suggestions of a quicker way of doing it than this, um, pop a comment below. So what I've done is we've got the, so the Luma grid here, this comp, that's the black turbulent displace layer moving up and down that I showed you just now. That is 5,000 by 5,000. These individual pre-comps are 500. So obviously we have, we need a grid of 10 by 10. Maths. So I've just duplicated them, changed the amount by 500. And I won't put you through that, but obviously we have a grid of 10 and you can see they're getting higher here because I've already got the expression 
on the Z position where they're being driven by the Luma. So once I've got one row, I've duplicated that row and then gone in and then just changed the Y position amount by 500 to duplicate that row. So it doesn't take too long, but I will say at this point, with all the expressions on each individual comp, my After Effects started to get very slow. I don't know how fast your computers are, but uh, that's something to bear in mind. Uh, you've got a hundred comps each with one or two expressions. They're looking at, it's looking at the Luma grid. It was very painful. So here's our grid, uh, 100 pre comps, 10 by 10. At the moment, they're all using the same all sorts pre comp. What I didn't want to do is manually go in and alt replace each individual one because it'd be a pain. So if you look in the description below, we have this expression, which is on the time remap. So I've time remapped each one of these and instead of them referencing the same all sorts. So in the project, it's this one here, underscore zero, all sorts. All of these all sorts are referencing that comp, but instead of them cycling through each all sorts, one frame at a time, I've enabled time remapping and added this expression. So it randomly chooses a frame and then holds on it. So because After X was being so slow with this master comp, with all the expressions and everything, so with FireX expressions, there's lights, uh, lots of 3D extruded layers, etc. So it's not a surprise. So I pre comp that and pre rendered it and called it no grade. So the, the last part of adding grade, and then there's this faux depth of field using compound blur and a blur mat. That's just a lot easier to work with because I pre rendered it. So if you end up doing something similar with lots of layers, lots of pre-comps, lights, etc., you might want to do the same thing. So with this one here, this is how I actually ended up creating the licorice all sorts animation. It's because I saw this animation by 2D Pete and it was really nice. So I just wanted to see if I could recreate it in After Effects. Uh, so After Effects is my happy place and I refuse to leave it. What is a little bit of a pain is this step here where I'm having to create um, a grid of text and that's a live text layer. But then let me skip ahead. Got to convert it to a shape layer and then use exposed shape layers. And then it warns you, you've got 216 individual items. So that takes a while. So what would be great is if you could apply this expression to a live text layer. There might be a way of doing it. I don't know how. I'd love to know if someone, if someone does know how. It might be something for After Effects developers to come up with, perhaps. But at the moment, the only way that I know how to do it is to apply this expression to individual layers. So you've got to, you've got to create a grid of whatever, text, dots, um, all sorts. The other difference between this and the all sorts animation, apart from the aesthetic, obviously, is the Luma sample expression is linking to the extrusion of these letters, not their movement on the Z. But otherwise, it's um, essentially similar concept. So I was playing around with the the lighting, trying to get trying to get sort of like a nicer effect because the so lights and shadows in After Effects are obviously not as nice as they are in Cinema 4D. So just whatever hacky trick I could use to sort of get a nice effect on it. This comp had, because I, I wanted to emulate the, the sort of the white face of the text, but with also the shadow and there's, there's a bit of warmth of color there as well. So uh, instead of it being one master comp, I, I've got different pre comps. So some have got just the, the face of the text and I've keyed out the extrusion just so I've got a bit more control. Oh, and, um, you know, can sort of force the look 
that I wanted to in the final comp. So that's it, two animations, no keyframes. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.